What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. We are starting up a new project today and this one is going to be a uh, special treat. We have a screen porch, an open deck, a patio with fire pit, retaining walls, all kinds of stuff. Crazy details on this one. So on this video I'm going to show you what we're going to do to prepare some of our framing details because we're building a roof over this, everything needs to be figured out like down to the eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna show you how we're doing that so that everything comes together seamlessly in the end. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. So here is the project. We have screen ports that's gonna come off of here. It's gonna extend this roof line 22 feet. That's gonna be all screened in with storm windows. It's gonna be really, really nice. And then we have the same size here, coming out 22 feet and that's gonna be open deck. We have an outdoor kitchen going in, bar area here fireplace over here. This one's gonna be pretty crazy. So we opened up the house here in this corner because we're gonna have our beams for our porch coming right out of there. Those are gonna be three and a half by nine and a half LVLs. Our ledger board's gonna be an inch and a half longer than the measurement from outside of roof beam to outside of roof beam for our rim boards. So we're figuring that out now and then we're gonna cut the ledger, get those installed. What do you think? Smooth? Smooth as silk. Smooth as silk. This is something that Ant really likes to do, is mark both sides of the joist so there's absolutely no confusion. No matter who's looking at it, you know that the joist goes right here. I always did it with one line and an X, but uh, depending on who's looking at it and installing the joist, they might get a little bit confused. It's real easy, it doesn't take any time. You have your mark. Every speed square usually has marks on it. So this is my inch and a half, so since I have my mark, slide it over to inch and a half, it's done. Boom. No time. So you can see all these footings that we have here. These are helical piles. We got these installed by Techno Metal Post. They go down into the ground about seven feet. And the really nice thing about these footings is that they're torqued. So you know exactly what you're getting with these. If they don't reach that with the initial seven feet, they put extensions on it. So there was two footings here that had to go three feet deeper to really grab and get that right torque for the load that's gonna be on it. So that's something that you wouldn't know with concrete footings, you know, unless you're testing the soil, which, you know, nobody's really gonna do. So it's a really good way to hire somebody out. Now it's day one, we're ready to frame on it and we don't need a footing inspection. And we know that everything is calibrated for the load that's gonna be on top of it. So it's something I really recommend if you're building a lot of decks. Good. Mm -hmm. Hi Viz. Hi Viz, orange chalk. There was our mark. Now we have our ledger line that goes straight across. Beautiful. What's our ledger gonna be cut at? 200 inches. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that we have the top of the house taken apart and we see how that's framed and where exactly we can get our beams to sit, we have the ledger figured out at 200 inches, so we're gonna get that cut. And uh, everything's gonna work out beautifully. I don't see any issues yet. I mean, we've only been here for like two hours, so, you know, stuff will come up, but you'll see every part of it. Every part of it, every problem, every solution as well. That's the key. What was here was a hardscape step that led down to a patio here. And uh, this was only about like three years old, but they brought the first step up right to the framing. And look at that. That's like three or four years right there. Imagine what that would look like 15 years from now. And the patio looked like it was in good shape. It looked like it was installed pretty good, but there was no flashing on that top step. It's pretty much eating through the whole framing of the house. So it's already eaten through all of the sheathing and it's only a matter of time before that goes into the rim joist of your house. And that's really tough to fix. So uh, it's a good thing that we found it now, only a couple of years later, cause 10, 15 years down the road, that would be 10 times as bad. So make sure you use proper flashing people. It's not that hard. You can see these helical piles are just like concrete foundation in that they have a post base like this. And you can see these just come right out. Once we have it set, we're on some self-tapping screws through here and lock it in for justice. These are gonna be our beams. 
Go right there. Day one went really well. You can see when we have everything marked out, the framing of the joist actually goes really fast. So now we're on to some complicated details. We're gonna start tying in this roof and the beams there. So our six buys are gonna act as our trim foundation for the inside. So our framing layout has to be like dead on. We're not just building a flat surface and then erecting walls on top. Those six buys are actually going to be the frames for our storm windows that are gonna go in. So. We have a lot of thought that went into this to make sure it's perfect and there's really no room for error. The storm windows, they're supposed to be about an eighth an inch clearance on each side. So we're working with a quarter inch per window. That's really close, not a lot of room for error. So we took a lot of time with the layout and I'm gonna show you how we're doing that today. We have the orange string line. Jose, so you have the orange string line? We got a lot of this frame up already. And uh, you can see down there how out of whack that joist is. That's why we put blocking in there. That's gonna straighten everything out because we have the same measurement at the ledger and then on this beam, but in between that, you can see that lumber is bowed out. So blocking is gonna straighten all that out and make sure that everything is nice and good. It's also gonna strengthen it and help uh, take any bounce out of it. So we've got two rows of blocking on each deck here. And let me show you what we got going on for the roof because we should be getting our LVL soon and then we can start installing those. So we have a couple posts up and uh, let me show you the house detail. So you can see we've got a lot of this house taken apart now. We've got the sheathing off. We've got this outside corner stud taken off. This stud right here is in line with our rim joist of the deck. So our beam is gonna sit right in here and you can see we have one jack stud here. We're gonna build this out with one more. And right there, that is our beam pocket. So our beam's gonna sit in here. It's gonna be bearing on three inches. So once we get that in and we lock it in, we will be patching all this back in, but we need to leave it open for the inspector so that he sees that it's actually sitting on some jack studs and not just floating in there. Cause some people will do that. They'll put a hanger on uh, the sheathing and just throw an LVL up there, but that, that is no good. So we're not gonna do that. Tell me. Jesus. You nervous? Go away. Fast you finish. And I'll stop filming. What? Say so these aren't nailed in. Oh, Ant, these aren't nailed in. I know. Oh. Oh. All right. Let me just worry about it. A block of wood just took your job. Next step here is getting ready to install our beams. So you saw how we have the house pocketed out so that those can sit right inside on some studs. And now we're notching these out so that our beam can sit on here. Kind of looks like this one's giving me the middle finger. 
but that's a nice notch right there. We got our last post to notch, and you can see how we have this cross bracing here. All we did, we wanted to have these posts as close to plumb on both sides as possible so we don't have to maneuver it too much once we put our beam in and secure it in place. So we just have this brace on here. See, we have it screwed in there, and then we screw it in up there. We put the screws in there first, and then this one we had to push a little bit, so we get somebody to push it. Once it hits that level line, boom, pop a screw in this side, and it's good to go. How do you feel after lifting that big old beam? I feel jacked. I feel very vascular. Uh, kind of feel like I throw a bear into outer space. <laughs> we got two of these beams up. They're pretty damn heavy, so uh, we got all hands on these things. But you can see we have this little brace there, so we can get it up close to the elevation that we need, and it can rest on that if we need to regroup. We got the same thing over there. These are pretty heavy. How was it? Piece of cake. We got all three of our beams up here. I was trying to get some footage, but uh, we kind of needed all hands on deck to get those up there safely. So we've got them installed and now these are all the support posts and they all go down to an individual footing. So these four are really our supports. They're going down to helical piles. So that's all supported. Now we're doing some six by sixes in between and that's really just to frame out our windows because we're gonna have storm windows here. So I'm gonna put those in. They're not really supporting the roof. They're just there as our nailers because we're gonna trim around them and then the windows will just pop right in. That's one of the aspects where we really only have a quarter inch of clearance. The cutback on the windows is an eighth of an inch, so we need to be really, really precise. The openings need to be nice and square so that everything goes in after the trim. Trim goes in first, then the windows, so there's really not a lot of margin for error on this. So we're gonna get those up, make sure they're nice and straight, and then build some knee walls around this. Now that we've got all these intermediate posts in, again, these aren't support posts, they are just for our windows. So you can see how large these storm windows are. They're pretty sweet. So we'll talk more about those once they come in and that's kind of a final detail, but we have all these knee walls going up. Basically what we have is 22 and a half inches from here to here. That's gonna be enough for three decorators, Kaya, seven and a quarter boards with that quarter inch gap. Then on top of that will be our sill. Everything else will be trimmed out with white PVC, all of our posts and everything. But that's gonna be a super cool look that it's all full boards. We're gonna have full boards here, go right up. Then our sill's gonna sit on top. Window will go in and it'll look like it's all planned out. It's always the plan. Hey, buddy. Don't you dare. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't you even there. What are you doing? I'm, I'm blacking out right now. Woo! It's like 90, what? 93 degrees. Whoa. Hey. Looking yeah. good. He's staining all of these black Let's so that they that. disappear. That Don't use that clip. Use okay. that. If I okay. to hack your YouTube. Okay. You get demonetized real Okay. Quick. Take it easy. Okay, go ahead. We've got this packed out right now. Kind of looks ridiculous like this. And said, why didn't we just fur out those posts and then put three-quarter plywood? But um, I thought this was easier. 
up for debate, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, we want our fascia detail to continue down straight to the ground. So I figured we could just throw up these two bys. We're gonna cover that up with some roofing felt so uh, we don't need to stain this. Since this is all packed out and it's all inch and a half, we can just screw our fascia boards on anywhere. We don't have to make sure we're hitting any studs in the wall. So it's pretty easy. It'll make for a quick installation of our fascia. And it looks like Ant needs some help, so I'm gonna go over there and help him. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, oh, oh. oh he got crispy today. Oh, no. You can see we got this tar paper on here. Need to get a little bit more. But next week, we're gonna build these out, build out our beams, and our trim's gonna go all over this. So we have Kaya gonna go here, and then we have white PVC. White PVC is gonna wrap around these windows. The windows have a black frame on it, so it's gonna look really cool and modern. Then next week, we get to the roof. What pitch we got? Nine. Phew. 9-12, it's gonna be fun, stay tuned. Well, that's it for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it, part one of our screen porch framing. We are gonna have a long weekend. It's Thursday right now, we're taking off Friday. Next week, we're gonna be framing out that roof. We got some really exciting stuff coming up, so make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned, and until next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.